Whenever you're going to talk about DNA structure, you first want to think and talk about the nucleotide. Our genome is 3.2 billion base pairs long. That's going to be over 6 billion nucleotides in every single cell. Here you're just looking at a tiny fragment of what would be a huge volume of letters, those A's, T's, C's, and G's. And those letters represent nucleotides. A nucleotide is actually three simple pieces, a sugar, a phosphate group, and a base. The sugar can be ribose, which is an RNA, or deoxyribose in DNA. And those nucleic acids are named for their sugars because that is the one main thing that makes them different from each other. Every single RNA nucleotide has ribose, Every DNA nucleotide has deoxyribose. The base, which is also called a nitrogenous base or a nitrogen-containing base, can be cytosine, guanine, adenine, thymine, or in RNA you'll find uracil. So you've got thymine in DNA and uracil in RNA. And you can tell these apart by some of their groups, the amine group and the double bonded oxygen and cytosine, the amine group and double bonded oxygen and guanine. So what makes those different is cytosine is a single ring structure, guanine is a double ring structure, adenine has the amine group, th thymine has a methyl group, and two double bonded oxygens and uracil simply has the two double bonded oxygens so they're very similar in structure which makes sense because they have very similar purposes only one is found in DNA and one is found in RNA you've probably also noticed that we've got these well here are the sugars and then going back to the nucleotides You've got purines, which are the double bonded rings. They are larger than the pyrimidines, which are single bonded rings. And so how do you remember that? Well, my AP biology teacher had an interesting way of helping us remember the difference, that purines are the double ring and pyrimidines are the single ring. If you picture these as fences viewed from above, and then you fill them with pigs, which would be stinky. You fill the purine with pigs, so you can fit a lot more pigs in that double fence than you can in the single fence. And so PU, it would be very stinky. That's how you, I have, to this day, remembered that purines are double ring. It was just, that one stuck in my head. It stayed with me. Hopefully the cute pig concept will stick with you too. DNA and RNA, DNA, the structure you're going to recognize, it's this twisted ladder, what we call a double helix. RNA nucleotides form into a single strand structure, so all the bases are exposed. They're not binding to each other, except in these complex folded three-dimensional shapes, very much like a protein, only they're not a protein. They are nucleic acid, so they can serve some very unique purposes and roles, which we're still kind of uncovering to this day. But when you're looking at a DNA molecule with these bases that are bound to each other in the center of the ladder, you'll see that A always bonds with T and C always bonds with G. And we call these the complementary bases. You can't have two purines together. The molecule would be too wide. Two pyrimidines would be too narrow. But a purine and a pyrimidine together is just right. It's like Goldilocks. Put two nucleotides together across from each other, and you have a base pair. That's what we refer to as a base pair. The base pairs are held together by hydrogen bonds in between those nitrogenous bases. You'll see that A and T form two hydrogen bonds, and C and G form three hydrogen bonds. In order to be able to bind, the nucleotides actually have to be flipped upside down on one strand, and so DNA strands actually have directionality. 
You can see this by looking at the way the sugars are pointing. That's the easiest for me to see. Look at where that oxygen is pointing. The oxygen points to the 5 prime end of the molecule. Well, how does this 3 prime, 5 prime thing get its name anyway? Well, it's based on the structure of the sugar. So if you're looking at a sugar, you have 5 carbons. The fifth carbon is that methyl group hanging off. The first carbon is where the base will bind. The fifth carbon is where the phosphate group of the nucleotide will bind. And the third carbon is special. That is where the phosphate group of the newest nucleotide is going to bind. There is no other way to add DNA molecules to an existing DNA molecule that we know of except to add it to the three prime end. This is what our enzymes are built to do. So DNA is going to grow in the five prime to three prime direction and those three prime ends are going to extend outward.